Jeff tell you I'm off Friday? Well, that's funny that you're saying that you're off. You don't really work here. <laughs> <laughs> haven't been paid yet. <laughs> you haven't? No. Oh, here, let me give you, should I just give you a credit card? Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> While I pay Fallon, <laughs> roll the open. Here you go. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Happy Wednesday. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let us start with this crazy story. Crazy. Crazy out of New York. A cargo plane had to return to JFK last week. And you're thinking to yourself, why, Jace? Was there an unruly passenger? Was someone screaming? Were they throwing peanuts? No. A horse got loose on board. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The plane was carrying animals to Europe. The, yeah. Okay. Yes, Aaron, I promise you. They were carrying animals to Europe. It's not clear how the horse... <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to read this. We're not clear how the horse got loose. But the pilot said they had to come back. The plane landed safely, and we think the horse is okay, too. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not sure. I... The audience isn't sure about this story. They're really not sure about this story. Me too. Everyone's worried about the horse. Maybe this isn't the story we should have started the show with. I don't know. So let's continue before yeah. they get sad. Let's start the show, everybody. <laughs> okay, friends. Filling in for Kendall. Give it up for Fallon, everyone. Hello, dear friend. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? Having a good morning? Pretty good, your yeah. Your hair looks good. Oh, thank you. You're getting a lot of compliments on your hair. We got a lot oh. of emails yesterday. Did thank you, you shampoo or something? What did you do? It was clean yesterday. Perfect. Today it is a day old. So. It's a day old? Yeah, it's a day old. It looks fantastic. Thank you so much, yeah. We have, um, I don't know if we're ready for the studio audience today, in the audience today, you know, and again, I always get a status report uh, back in my little hole from audience <laughs> coordinator, Aaron Schwaberini. Aaron comes back there, yeah. Aaron, Aaron every morning comes back after she feels the temperature of the studio audience, you know. Are they quiet? Or are there a couple mean ones in there, you know? So like, today she goes, oh, Jason. She goes, there's a group of ladies. <laughs> They're not just the red hat ladies. They are the red hat sassies. Oh. That's right, right there. Oh. Now, and I can pick the leader of the red hat sassies right there. She's right in the middle, isn't she? Right there. They're, you! You! Right there. No, 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 no. You have boss lady written all over you. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Fallon, we're in trouble today. I know, I'm excited We, we are for in it. a lot of trouble. I know. I have a feeling second row will talk back if you give them a chance. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I hope so. That's right. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's what I, I, I want to be a red hat lady when oh, I get to be. Yeah, I do. Yeah, eventually. you should. Yeah. What, would be your, what would be your name? I thought um, you could do like red hat chili peppers. You could do that for like a name for your group. But what would your group name be on the spot? Red hat homos. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be my own chapter. It'll be my own chapter. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
great. Now I can't be a member. Uh, I'm no, upset. We'll let you okay, in. Okay, all right. We're thank very you. welcoming. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, good. Yes, yeah. we're very welcoming at the RHH. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, we'll, we see. welcome all. It's I'm great. I'm so excited to see the merch, you know? The Red Hat Homo yeah. merch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have t shirts. That's uh -huh. right. We're okay. going to, yeah, berets. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Because all of our hats, our members are going to have to wear berets. Yes, That's obviously. Right. Uh, a little obviously. Bit more flattering, a little yeah. bit more stylish. No, you know? we're, we're, yeah. we're glad they're here. We're going to have some fun today. So let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's do it. Well, uh, we're going to start something emotional. Uh, I, I grabbed my phone and let me just stop. Executive producer Jeff is so good. We are we instantly updated the story and I read it right before I came yeah. back, uh, right before I came out here. If you saw me throw my phone on the desk, this is why. So listen to this. Remembering their friend. Now, it was two right before we started the show, but now three stars from Friends uh, are speaking out uh, on the death of their friend and their co-star, Matthew Perry. In just the last hour, uh, Jennifer Aniston posted on Instagram saying, Perry's death cuts deep and led to an insane wave of emotion she's never experienced before. She says Perry was part of her chosen family. Meanwhile, LeBlanc, uh, Maddie number two, uh, shared a series of pictures, this being one of them, on his Instagram yesterday saying, it is with a heavy heart I say goodbye. It was an honor to share the stage with you and to call you my friend. I will always smile when I think of you. Yeah. And made a, and he, and he ended it with a joke. I'm never gonna get back that 20 bucks you owe me. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Courtney Cox, Monica, shared a behind the scenes video from a famous scene from the show when Chan, remember when Chandler and Monica Stephanie's popping champagne over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Chandler and Monica were caught, remember, in bed. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this. Do you think you know I was here? Okay, your turn. No, no beginning. <laughs> he told me to say it, he did. <laughs> <laughs> A little blooper. Well, Courtney says uh, Matthew gave her the line to say, and uh, did that a lot, according to Courtney. She says uh, she's grateful for every single moment she had with Perry. And I just read right before I came out here, Schwimmer uh, just gave oh, a statement did. too. Yeah, he just posted. Poor Jeff is like on his computer trying to keep up with all this. <laughs> let me take off, I don't have my bifocals, so let me take <laughs> off my glasses. Um, I'll read a little bit of this. Uh, he just posted this about 40 minutes ago. Maddie, thank you for 10 incredible years of laughter and creativity. I will never forget your impeccable comic timing and delivery. You could take a straight line of dialogue and bend it to your will, resulting in something so entirely original and unexpectedly funny, it still astonishes. And you had heart, which you were generous with and shared with us so we could create a family out of six strangers. I imagine you up there somewhere in the same white suit, hand in your pockets looking around could there be any more clouds <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. yep oh that makes you teary -eyed. it does absolutely now we're you know kudro we'll, we'll probably hear from and uh, yeah. just what what great what what great messages from the from the friends let's move on next in the dish the first perfect score of the season on dancing with the semi stars it was Whitney Houston night and one star well, led the way. Look. That's uh, actress Sochi Gomez earning a 40 out of 40 for her tango. Yeah. Wow. 
Tangles aren't, uh, tangos are not easy. I've never danced one, but from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. They look hard. They look, yeah. yeah. Fallon, you've ever done a tango? Nope. Nope. <laughs> ever plan on doing a tango? Not unless I'm paid a lot of money. That's right. Yeah. Have you ever done one of those charity, been asked to do a local like Dancing with the Stars charity thing? Uh, no, I haven't been asked. Yeah. I think there's a reason I haven't been asked. I've asked, been asked once. I politely, uh, I said no. I said, no, find success, else, success elsewhere. Yeah, I, you no, said yeah. no. You, you don't want me in your competition. Another front runner was close behind, earning a near perfect score. Look. To make you drop to Reality TV star Ariana, Ariana Maddox got, she was close to a perfect 39 out of 40. At the end of the night, a TV legend was sent packing. Bye-bye, oh, Greg. Bra uh, Brady Bunch star Barry Williams got the boot. Despite, look, but Greg, you got to give it up to him. He got 32 out of 40. And that was a, yeah. And that was a higher score than Harry Jowsey, who I, I is probably three decades younger than he is. So, like, congratulations. I don't even know who Harry is, but anyway. I know. He's like a young reality star. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. I mean, but, Greg, I, I would have, uh, no offense, uh, I would have thought Greg might have been eliminated sooner. So, bravo to Barry. Exactly. Bravo Absolutely. to Barry. Yeah. I, again, I couldn't do that. No chance. Could never, ever do that. No, you could. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I, okay. I wish I could dance, but it is, it's something that I do not possess. Right. That's, and that's fair. You can acknowledge what you're not good at. That's, oh. Yeah. I, I, I look like a lane from Seinfeld at every dance. <laughs> every single, every single dance. We have a lot more to come. Go get some more coffee, some more o OJ. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> hey, almost <laughs> something else. OJ. Well, the wait is almost over for fans of Fargo. Love that series, man. Season five of the TV hit premieres next week. And once again, we love this. It takes place right here in the good state of Minnesota. Look. Like I said, I got a photo. Excuse me. So what, uh, she's some kind of criminal also? Not exactly. Had a mix up at her daughter's school this week. Paged an officer by accident. How's that happen? He did the moment, I'm guessing. Used to be a saying, Minnesota nice. But I was there. Nothing nice about Minnesota that day. Oops. What did I do? What did you? I must have. I don't know. I pressed something. Darn it. You deleted the victim. Her yeah. photo. Yeah. Me and technology don't see eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Morjani and Joe Carey play two officers trying to track down a Minnesota housewife with a mysterious past. It premieres Tuesday night on FX, and Richa and Joe join us live. Give it up, everybody. Hey. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> okay, Joe. Joe, our producer was hearing you uh, in the break there talking about Matt's bar here in Minneapolis. <laughs> Matt's bar, Juicy uh, Lucy. The Juicy Lucy, my friend. Yes. <laughs> yeah. telling me all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. I, I, was, I worked there last June, and I would love the city. It was great. Great place to spend time, so yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll be receiving a giant box full of uh, Juicy Lucy's very soon. In the mail. From Perfect. The, yeah. <laughs> Richard, let Perfect. me Richard, let me start with you. Our accent, our 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 way of speaking, um, is uh, made fun of a lot. How hard was it for you to wrap your brain around the 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 way we speak here? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Is it made fun of a lot? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. If anything, I, I mean, I love the accent, and I know that, you know, people don't all have the same accent over there. I know there's different dialects depending on where you are in the region. Um, and I'll just say for me personally, I mean, I mean, I think all of us, none of us ever had any intention of making fun of the accent or doing a caricature or a stereotype. I actually had the conversation with Noah Hawley before we started shooting that um, it was very important actually for the accent to, to be there, but to feel very grounded. 
and real, especially because my character is very grounded. Um, and you know, we had the honor of working with the incredible dialect coach, Liz Hamilstein, who is the original dialect coach who worked with all the movie actors mm -hmm. and all the previous actors from the series as well. So yeah, hopefully oh. nobody ever thinks that we were making oh, fun of amazing. the accent. No, <laughs> my, my, my question actually, Richard, was leading to a compliment, which was you oh. do a subtle, fantastic, fantastic Thank version. You version of the much because sometimes people do a cartoon version yours is subtle yeah. and very believable so hats off to thank you on that you. one yeah thank joe, you so much i appreciate it joe your character's called gator i just love saying that tell us about gator <laughs> gator. gator uh i got to play the son of john ham uh who is the sheriff in town and he's a uh, <laughs> very complex and complicated character and my uh my goal as his son was to try to impress him and to make him proud of me. And so there's, uh, you know, a lot of daddy issues going on there. So that was really fun. Also, just great to work with John. You know, mm -hmm. he's a, he's such an amazing actor, obviously, and has a very impressive and <laughs> glittering resume. And it was just great to watch him work. And um, I guess I feel that way about really kind of everybody in this show. Yeah. We had such a crazy cast of people so every day yeah. we were kind of working with these all-stars um, yeah. and to be included in that yeah very special yeah totally. I, I was gonna say my, my last question which I'll go back to you and that is playing in this universe that is so rich and full of so many great twists and turns what is it like yeah. playing in this play uh, play this play box of the sandbox of Fargo yeah, I, I mean, it's everything you said. It's so much fun and it's liberating as an actor to feel like, you know, Fargo really is a very genre fluid series and, and, yeah. and movie. I think that it's not a comedy, but it's also not a drama. It's also not a thriller. It's kind of a, a mix of everything. And, and I think that that, uh, it's not something I really consciously think about when I'm doing my work um, on set, but it, it does kind of give us a freedom to feel like we can, um, be anything. Yeah, 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 that tone is, you know, something that... It does have a very specific tone. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it's something that yeah. I feel like is, that's kind of what Fargo yeah, is. Yeah, that's really, what Fargo is. You know, is that tone. And speaking of, of another universe, before we say goodbye, Joe, we're looking forward to the return of Stranger Things, my friend. <laughs> oh, hopefully soon. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you so thank much you. for your time. Thank you thank so you. much. Thanks Thank so you. much. Richard and Joe. Season 5 of Fargo premieres Tuesday, November 21st, with two episodes they stream the next day on Hulu. I love the series. Mm -hmm. I haven't liked every season because it's an anthology, so not, it's, it's not a continuing story. Right. It's different with a story set within the universe. This one's already getting good reviews. Well, I've, I've shared on the show my admiration for John Hamm, so I will be checking, yeah. out, will yes, be you checking have. out this season. Yes, you have. Yes. That's right. Yeah. More dish for you now. Leslie Jones is guest hosting The Daily Show this week, and last night she welcomed her big-time crush, NBC political analyst Steve Kornacki and she started <laughs> she started the interview by showing him clips of her dedication look at this your back is in your gap shirt and your regular tie dude and your two-tone belt you belong to us <laughs> <laughs> I am so embarrassed, but not really. I heard that you didn't know who Taylor Swift was, which I don't care. But um, <laughs> do you know who Beyonce is? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Woo, I was going to have to divorce you, Steve. <laughs> I... We were watching. We were watching clips of her. I, I love Leslie Jones, and and when the rotation of guest hosts started, we loved her the first round. And watching this morning with uh, Eric, photographer Eric and Jeff, we were laughing yeah. out loud. Comedy Central, give her that show. Yeah. Give her that show. She's really good. Yeah. I
always liked her on SNL. I think she was a little bit of a polarizing personality on SNL. She but was. I, I loved her, so. And her on the gram, because that's the clip she was <laughs> showing. Her, now look, that's not for everyone, because, you know, if you're sensitive and don't like cuss words, don't listen, don't follow Leslie. That's not her, yeah. That's not your jam, but I love her commentary on Game of Thrones. When she watches a show mm -hmm. and she does live commentary, oh, yeah. I laugh until my stomach hurts. Absolutely. So we love you, Leslie. Next up, we told you this week about John Oliver's quest to get a certain bird to win New Zealand's contest, Bird of the Century. <laughs> well, John started the campaign a week and a half ago after discovering a loophole in the contest, allowing people <laughs> from other countries to vote for this Kiwi contest. <laughs> well, overnight, everyone, over 350,000 votes were cast. Normally, it's like 6,000 votes for this contest. And the winner was announced on New Zealand Morning TV. Look. Without further ado then, Nicola, who is Bird of the Century? Uh, look, Forest and Bird is proud to announce that New Zealand's Bird of the Century is... <laughs> John Oliver will be <laughs> John Oliver running interference. That's right. The contest organizers say <laughs> the organizers say they're happy with all the extra publicity that John brought to the native birds. Get this: one person. One person in good old Pennsylvania voted 3,400 times. Oh my God! Just that God, person was bored. God man. bless America. Yeah. That's right. God, I mean seriously, please. That is fantastic. I just like John. I just love saying that bird's name. The poo tacky tacky. Is that I, what it is? That's okay, poo yeah. tacky tacky. Tacky tacky. Put the bird. bird, and I love how the Kiwis say bird. <laughs> But, and the people that the organizers, the, the, the magazine or the organization is called Forced and Bird. Forced and Bird. Mm. They take it very seriously. I get it. You should. You I know. know. I mean, have you ever gone bird watching? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you think about that question mm -hmm. and think about who you're asking. Yes. Ask me again. Have no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. 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 Have you? Yeah, I met uh, I met Kevin at Animal Kingdom in Disney. No, okay, no, <laughs> no, I've bird watched at Animal Kingdom at well, Disney you World. Said you haven't. Well, I mean, well, that's not real. I mean, that's real bird watching, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I have. I have bird feeders up, and I document. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. You have bird feeders in your yard and you document yeah. what birds steal from you? Well, no. I First of all, I tried to become friends with crows because I heard that they will leave you. <laughs> they remember you. They remember you and they'll leave you trinkets and presents. So I went out and spoke to them and left like some <laughs> glitter and dimes and cat food for them. We haven't we haven't connected yet. Oh, yeah. And I also have a cardinal couple that comes frequently. Aww. Yep. Yep, Cardi G. Um, that's the couple name. When did your neighbors call the police on you? Um, when, thank right? you for like, it, yeah. yeah. Was it, how long after you talked to the crows did they call? I the, did actually wonder. I'm like, the they're going to be worried about yeah. me. <laughs> Next up, she's a two time Super Bowl champion and one of the most recognizable players in the NFL. But Patrick Mahomes has a superstition you will not believe. Dude. Oh, someone knows the story already. That's right. Dude, it's all right. Dude has been wearing the same red underwear on game day since his rookie season. <laughs> Mahomes shared the gross details in Monday night's Manning cast. Look. I love a good superstition, but you know, couldn't you just do something like eating the same pregame meal? Did it have to be the red underwear? <laughs> well, 
You know, um, well, first, my wife, Brittany, got them for me, so I had to, I'm not, not throwing y'all down, but I have to wear them, you know. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, I threw them on that first season. Um, we had a pretty good season that season. I only wear them for game day, though, so I can't get, they're not too worn down. They're not like these, like, nasty, under, I clean them. You wash them. Um, you wash them? I do, oh, I wash them. I wash them every once in a while, at least. Is it a thong? Um, if, if is it a G-string? What is it? I mean, if we're, if we're on a hot streak, I can't wash them, you know? Like, I got to just keep, <laughs> keep it rolling. I don't know. I don't know if you should be using the word streak when you're talking about your oh, underwear. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of information. I like I like that he feels comfortable sharing, but that's a lot. It's a lot. If it works, I mean, I guess it, do I guess it. it does. Yeah, it's his lucky charm. I love his voice so much. Ew, uh, why? I, no, I'm just, I, I, oh, okay. I'm being facetious. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I mean, me too. Yeah. No, okay. I, I, really quick. Do you have a superstition at all? Uh, not. No, not really. Do you? Uh, the only thing I wear, there's a blue tie with polka dots that I usually wear on the first of a show. Oh. Like I wore it on the buzz. I wore it the first day I started anchoring the news. I wore it on our first show. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. But it's no. it's clean. I clean it. Yeah. It's well, not, that's yeah. also a little different a tie than underwear. underwear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stephanie Hansen and more when we come back. Back in a moment. We're on a mission to help you for Thanksgiving. Coming up in just a little bit, our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen, is back. Helping you, not necessarily with food, but what to serve for cocktails and drinks. And then it's the great store-bought pumpkin pie tasting contest. Which store will win? Which store is the most delicious? You will find out when The Jason Show continues. back one week from today many of us many of you rather will be hitting up the grocery store for those last minute items ahead of thanksgiving but don't forget about what to drink on turkey day and beyond here to show us how to mix up some festive cocktails and mocktails for the holiday season is the emmy winning host of taste buds on fox local the one the only stephanie hansen everyone <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I am happy you're here. I really dig holiday cocktails. Okay, I was wondering what was going to come out of your mouth. No, no like, but this is your Super Bowl. This is yes, this, this is, is my high holiday. This is your high holiday. You it is the love high holiday of feasting. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do? What, what cocktail are we? Uh, well, you and I have talked about a few episodes where I had a signature party and I didn't have the signature cocktail prepared. So that I mean, was that a, might have been a true story, but yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah. a fail on my part. Yeah. So what I have... Fallon was at that um, dinner. Oh, she was actually. That's right. Stephanie yeah. had a dinner party. And, you know, when you think of Stephanie, you think Martha Stewart. So everything is going to be perfect. I was like, here, make your own Cosmopolitan. I got to go back into the kitchen. Yeah, and we sat there, and we hadn't had anything to drink for like no. two hours. Yeah. And we're like, what's up, Martha Stewart? What's yeah. up with this? No, so, it yeah. was a little bit of a fail. So. Yeah. I want to help you not have the fail that I had okay. by having a Thanksgiving, or you can do this at Christmas time too, or the holidays, any season really, a punch. Okay. Okay, because this is a cocktail or a mocktail, depending on who you're serving it to. So you can have it with kids. Because mocktails are hot, Steph, you know that. Yes. And I'm using about two cups of cranberry juice. Okay. And a lot of this is kind of based on your personal tastes and your feel. I'm going to use another two cups of orange juice. Okay. I already have in the bowl uh, cranberries, and I have some pomegranates that I picked a little bit earlier and got a few little dribbles on the table, so please ignore. It's fine. Um, Stephanie also, says it does look like a murder scene down there, it does, but it's fine. But just, Don't worry about you know, it. Yeah. Ignore it. Okay, I'm going to add this blood orange bittersweet liqueur, but it's a non alcoholic. Okay. Okay. And it's non alcoholic. A non alcoholic. And you don't have to do this. I just like a little bit richer flavor, and I think the color's super pretty. So two shots? Yeah. For a normal punch bowl? Yep. Okay. And again, kids can drink this too. It's just kind of a sweetened syrup. Yeah. And then this is the thing that's really going to bring it all together. This is the blood orange soda. You can find this <laughs> at like Trader Joe's. You can find this at your local grocery store. 
If you're looking for an alternate version, San Pellegrino has one too, the little cans, blood orange cans. You can use those. Oh, I'm very so, excited. I never had I've never had the blood orange soda. I've seen it. I've seen it at Whole Foods. I've seen it at Traders, but it's yeah. It's real good. And you want it to be like a bubbly situation. And then you're gonna add some oranges that you're gonna float. Okay. I like to add a little bit of lemon just because I'm sassy like that. You can, <laughs> yeah, that the got sassy. sassy. You yes. can float some rosemary just for a little pretty, some cinnamon sticks. Note, Note. that it is non-alcoholic at this point, right? It still is, yes. So if you want to make it alcoholic, do we want to do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've we've done, yeah, we've done. May I, okay, may I try? Yeah. May I try the kitty version first? Sure. Yeah, I'll just drink right out of the bowl. Yeah, oh, yeah. but I mean, oh, right there's a little. There we go. Yeah. Here, I'll just use this. Just use that. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Okay, let me try that. I usually would have a nice ladle, but you know. Oh, I can taste the pop of the blood orange. Yeah, and it really gives it that effervescent sparkle. Okay. But also like. It's Can you gorgeous. Just see how pretty the bowl is. Yeah, if you set it. Yeah, set it down okay, in the air. Sorry, get a beautiful I'm moving shot. the shot. No, sorry, it's Eric, all right. There Don't. you go. Um, now let's hook this up with some vodka. Yeah. So we're just gonna do. <laughs> it, it is a holiday that usually family is there, which when my family is around, I try to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Steph? Because, you know, I'm that try person to... that's going to say the thing that nobody wants anyone to say at the table, and I'm going to say it, <laughs> and then we're going to have a fight. We've had a few holiday fights. You know you know who that is in my family? You. That's right. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, exactly the reason I'm not here for Thanksgiving. Also, yeah. you got to pace yourself, right? You do. So I'm the cook, so I want to just have all my faculties together. But yeah. This would be with the vodka, and if you want to... You could substitute like Prosecco or sparkling wine I, or rum yeah. or gin or whiskey. Yeah. You, you know, really can put anything. I was going to say, you know what I would do? Oh, the sassy red hat ladies are doing this segment for us today. <laughs> uh, they are saying tequila as well. Yes. But yes, I, you yes. know what I, I would do? I would do champagne. Uh, yes. I would, a little, I like a little pop. And in, and if you wanted to stick the non-alcoholic, I would do club soda. I love the pop of club soda. Okay, but why would you just, why would you use champagne versus like cava or prosecco? Because real champagne is costly. You're so right. So I only want to I'd get the cheap that. stuff though. Yeah, okay, good. I'd get the $6 champagne. Okay, don't though. Don't. Get the La America. Okay, I'll just get that. Get a little $12 higher end. Okay. It's going to be a little less cloying, and you're going to have less of a headache the next day. Okay, yeah, that's right. You're right. You're right. Don't listen to me. Listen to her. More with Stephanie and a pumpkin pie taste test coming up. Stay with us. You're right. It's always a party when she's here. Stephanie Hansen's back. She's mixing up some cocktails and mocktails for the holiday season. Let's um, just talk like we're from the South. That's right. It's well, so I am, excellent. for heaven's sake. Um, th th I'm not joking. I was drinking some of the non-alcoholic during the um, <laughs> during the break. This is really good stuff, Aru. Yeah, not it that is. I. This, and I like a good punch because it is easy for the host. Yes, you for are sure. right about that. Yeah. And you can just set it out with the cocktail or the mixings, and people can mix their own. Yep. So okay, you what don't are we have doing to now, worry love? about if Grandma Betty needs a little more. Yeah. Um, okay, now I am muddling orange and a cherry. Orange and, and a cherry, you're muddling it. We're making a version of an old fashioned that you would have after dinner. Okay. So it's coffee flavored. So we're going to have Wait, one what? and a half, a coffee flavored old fashioned. It's really delicious. Okay. It's kind of after dinner drinky. So you're going to have the espresso martini that we're making next, oh, and you're going to have the old-fashioned for the whiskey drinker. Uh, audience, uh, espresso martinis are back, aren't they, Steph? Oh, they, 100%. They are espresso martinis, and there's a couple places around here that make really good ones, but yeah. Okay, I like to use the Cafe Frida coffee liqueur. It's locally made, but you can find any coffee liqueur, orange bitters. You have all that muddled with your cherry okay. inside your little old-fashioned situation here and we're just gonna shake. That looks like and a coffee is, creamer. Yeah, this is a quick shake. Okay. So you don't need to get all aggressive. Okay. I could really have clo closed that a little bit. It's all right. I like that color. So this is a coffee old fashioned. I'm not kidding. I've never heard of this. 
There's a lot of variations on old fashions, and old fashions are coming back too. Brandy Old Fashioned, Wisconsin, we see you. We know you just made that your state cocktail drink. Yeah, we um, see you, Wisconsin. There was a little cherry in my glass, or in this um, shaker, but you could put it in the glass too. So try that and let me know what you think. Good, and you know, you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah. I am not a brown liquor kind of girl. I don't, you know, I don't like brown liquor. I and I do not like old fashions. But if I was to do one, you know what the coffee does? It 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 complements the flavor of the bourbon or the brandy very well. Absolutely. Yes, it does. It's a good. Yeah. This is real good. And it's a nice after dinner. It's something unique, something different. It feels like you're upgrading your game. And now I'm getting a second act. I'm getting the coffee as it's sitting there. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Now it's like nice. a, it's a little party in my mouth. Okay. Yeah. I like okay. That. <laughs> okay. So let's say you're invited later. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Now say you have one more drink to make for an after dinner for the ladies and men can have espresso martinis too so I'm being a little sexist but <laughs> I'm gonna right. put an ounce of left. coffee liqueur yeah we're good okay I'm gonna do a little secret ingredient here a little salt in your okay? espresso martini in my espresso martini shiver me timbers and I'm not using espresso because I'm gonna make it fancy okay. like you would make it at home okay nobody has time to make espresso just for the one cocktail that grandma Ann wants yeah gra yeah okay now this one you got to shake for a long time like 20 seconds I'm bigger is shaking okay um that's not the best close-up I, I just <laughs> I like it that's great that'll be in the open very okay. very soon yeah shaking yeah. shaking 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 yeah, okay you're shaking because you want to give it that bubbly foaminess okay here's my glass I'm using a strainer Ooh. strainer is also helping us have a little bit of that foam oh yeah I know we got a wrap it's fine we're good okay here okay. we go see those little crystals and let me because I love now this I love you know I love it we've had many espresso martinis and it's dairy together. free it's no coffee needed. Stefaro. <laughs> it's real good. It tastes like because a good espresso martini should have real espresso. This tastes like that. Yeah, because this liqueur is really delicious. The oh. Cafe Frida from Denord. Cheers to Stephanie, everybody. Everything she talked about, including recipes. If you're needing a recipes from the segment, go to stephaniesdish.com. And don't forget to stream the latest episode of Stephanie's show, Taste Buds. Okay. It's easy to find on the Fox Local app on your smart TV, Fire Stick, Apple TV, Android, or Roku. A store-bought pumpkin pie taste test when we return. Cheers. Back in a moment. That is real good. Thanksgiving without finishing off the meal with a piece of pumpkin pie, but making yeah, but making a pumpkin pie can be difficult and time-consuming. And today we're doing a taste test to determine which store-bought pie is oh. the best. Yeah. Joining me for the taste test are Fallon and Stephanie Hansen. That's right. Now. Because every city has their own local grocery stores, we decided to buy pies from four national chains. So if you're in Iowa, Wisconsin, Orlando, Chicago, boom. We have Costco, we have Walmart, Target, and Aldi, okay? And each mat is a different pie, okay? So Steph, let's start by you. Let's all consume a bite of, we'll call that pie number one. I already have judgments about these. Okay, of course you do. Why? Well, like, I'm looking at the crust, like that one's already broken off and looks dry as the day is long. Some of them have like a weird orangey consistency. Oh my God, okay. Okay, let's just put them in our mouth okay. hole and decide later, okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. I'm liking the texture of the flesh. <laughs> oh! Oh, wait a minute. No. Oh! We'll, we'll oh! We'll oh! We'll okay. Yep. Oh! Not it. it tastes like chemicals. It does. Uh, it very. Got it, yeah. Very chemically chemically and burning. Oh. Okay. I wish we had like a palate cleanser. Okay. This one looks promising. The okay, crust this is holding up. Yeah. The color is a little odd. It's a little orangier than a normal. Well, pumpkin pie, it's odd. I mean, you know, it's orange. Mm. I'm very finding this one very promising. It's nice. Oh. I am too. It's lighter. The other one was like a more dense. 
and this does not taste chemically. No, and the crust is actually kind of nice. Has a doughy taste. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Like a cookie. There we go. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh. I feel like Prue and Paul Holiday. Okay. Now this is one. Already, why is this crust so sad and lonely? Aww. Why is it sad and lonely? It Maybe it wants like, to be lonely. No, it's like try. Oh, this one has like no crust on this end. Okay. Okay, I like the crust. I don't, nice. know, I don't know what you're talking about. The crust is good, Willis. I like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's like better a, than it looked. It's a little, it has like a buttery. I like it. Ooh. Mm. You are so wrong, Hanson. This might be my favorite so far. Yeah. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, yeah. but I'm reserving judgment. Okay. I'm going to like, I'm gonna finally. Give you, okay. Here's the perfect piece. That's the reserving judgment spot. There we go. All right, this one, go. the crust looks good. Okay. It's got a weird little pressed edge, like from a machine, which I don't dig. Okay, girl, these are uh, <laughs> these are from giant grocery. What do you I think, Ethel? What do you think, Ethel's in the kitchen yes. making all these? I'm For all these? Let me try. Mm. This doesn't uh -oh. taste like pumpkin to me. Mm. Mm -mm. It has like a strong, like vanilla. -y Hold on. Caramel. It's not bad. It just doesn't taste like pumpkin. Hmm. 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 Oh no. Like, oh. <laughs> oh. No. It's not pumpkin-y. There's such a weird smell. Oh. <laughs> One and four are not horrible. It. But I would say either of these are good. This one's probably the top, but it's close. Okay, There's so like the weirdest Fallon, smell. Fallon, let's start with you. Uh -huh. Let's rank them. Yeah, I would say one, two. Three, no, three, four. Okay, Stephanie Hansen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're the same. Okay, so we, that was that was four okay. for everyone. This is four, so let's do the worst one. Okay, the worst one for all of us is Walmart. Sorry. Walmart. Sorry, Walmart. 442. Okay, the Stephanie second worst. Target. Target. Target? Oh, wow. Hometown Target. How was dare so you, sorry. Target? <laughs> okay. Okay, what okay. I thought was the best. Yes. Stephanie, your favorite? It's going to be Costco. I just know it. Oh, no. Aldi. Aldi. $2.69, $2. too. What a value. Which means our Costco. Yeah, and the pie is huge at Costco. Oh okay. yeah, look, oh Jeff, bring that over here. The, do you talk about a value? Pounds. Look at this, five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. O M G. And you get a pound. Look at that bad boy. Four pounds. Four pounds. That's the size. We had an intern about that big. <laughs> yeah, that oh, is wow. huge. Wow. I lost that much weight last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <congrats. laughs> I think it just okay, imagine. so Costco and Aldi. I like. You know, when you look at it as a whole, not just the weird little bitty crust I got, it looks kind of pretty. Yeah, we liked it to begin with. That was, it? Oh, that was the only one that had to be refrigerated also, Jeff said. None of the others required refrigeration, Except but the Costco, Costco did. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, I, I mean, mean, not to be a snob, but that's just weird. Does that mean it's fresher, though? Give it up that's, for Stephanie yeah. and Fallon, everyone. Back in a moment. <laughs> that is Welcome back to the show. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Uh, yesterday, I'm, I'm going to do a health check on Fallon because yesterday we told you we went to the Taco John Test Kitchen mm -hmm. uh, right after the show and let's just say one of us and I'm not going to say who, but Fallon oh, okay, ate the entire yeah. dessert. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I, now, I did. you did? How are you feeling? How did you feel immediately after the, um... Immediately after it wasn't my best decision. I, <laughs> I hadn't eaten all day and I was very hungry and I really put it back quickly. So, yeah. You're going to see that because, just a little tease, uh, they're bringing back, they have brought back an item that all of you requested, had gone away for years. They brought it back, and uh, we got to make one of them, uh, one, of the one of those items, and that's what Fallon got to 
Yes. I consumed it as well. Not I, like I did, though. No, yeah. I didn't. I, it was a contest that I didn't know I was invited to. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, true. keeping your house plants looking great during the fall and winter with the help of Garden Pro Dale K. That's coming up tomorrow. But right now, that's going to do it for us. Thanks to this audience. Happy birthday back there. And thanks to you. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.